Welcome back to the MSAG's COVID-19 series. In our previous lessons, we've covered an overview of COVID-19, how the UK government has handled the pandemic, and the impact of COVID-19 on patients. In this lesson, we will take a look at the impact of COVID-19 on medical research. First, we'll take a look at some of the negative impacts that the pandemic has had on medical research. Then, we'll consider some of the achievements in medical research for COVID-19. One of the primary negative effects that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on medical research is reduced funding. Let's talk about how that has affected the UK. The Association of Medical Research Charities, or AMRC, is a body that represents the leading medical and health research charities in the UK. Members of the AMRC invested £1.9 billion in 2019 into medical research in the UK, which made up a total of 51% of public investment. This funding supports medical research and the careers of around 17,000 scientists. Let's take a look at two examples of large medical research charities in the UK. The first example we'll look at is the British Heart Foundation, or BHF. The British Heart Foundation is a large charity in the UK, which funds research related to heart and circulatory diseases. The BHF provides £446 million for medical research at 47 institutions around the UK which amounts to over half of the UK's public funding into heart and circulatory diseases. This includes funding the posts of more than 1,700 researchers, hundreds of whom are in the early stages of their scientific career. The BHF anticipates that the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on their net income will be up to 50% in 2020, resulting in the British Heart Foundation needing to cut its research budget from £100 million per year to £50 million per year. They described the pandemic as the biggest crisis in its 60-year history. One of the reasons for such a large drop in funding is due to the closure of all 730 BHF charity shops in the UK, which make roughly £30 million every year. Another large medical research charity in the UK is Cancer Research UK. It's the largest independent cancer research charity in the world and funds research into the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of cancer. Ian Folks, the executive director of Cancer Research UK, said the following regarding the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We are planning for a managed decrease in spending on research from pre-COVID levels of 400 to 450 million pounds to somewhere around 250 million pounds. This latest round of cuts to funding will result in 12 fewer fellowships, 24 fewer five-year research programs, and 68 fewer projects. Several hundred researchers will have to look elsewhere for funding. As we've seen, medical research in the UK relies heavily on charity funding, and this charity funding has been badly affected by the lockdown. The Association of Medical Research Charities estimates that the medical research charities lost 38% of their fundraising income between March and May of 2020. They also project a shortfall of between 252 and 368 million pounds in 2020-2021 alone. This shortfall in funds is largely due to a closure of charity shops and the cancellation of large fundraising events. The UK government set out a £750 million coronavirus funding scheme for frontline charities in April of 2020. However, this did not include charity-funded medical research. The Association of Medical Research Charities is calling on help from the government. Specifically, they're asking the UK government to match charity-funded research for the next three years. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on funding has not only affected the UK, it has also affected research internationally. Medical research can be funded publicly by charities and governments, and also privately by businesses and pharmaceutical companies. As we've seen, medical research in the UK relies heavily on charity support. Now let's compare our Cancer Research UK example with Canada and the USA. The situation in Canada has been fairly similar to that seen in the UK with regards to cancer research funding. The Canadian Cancer Society has predicted that the pandemic will cost them $100 million Canadian in lost donations during the 2020 financial year, which amounts to more than half of their budget. The American Cancer Society has seen a decrease in revenue of around $200 million US dollars. The charity has cut its expenditure on new research from $100 million to $50 million. However, the situation in the USA is different than in the UK. The US government contributes a larger proportion of total expenditure on medical research than the UK government. 
the U.S. government has not cut research fundings and so has acted as a backstop for medical research in the United States. This has helped to reduce the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on medical research in the USA. Now let's move on to how the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted clinical trials. Clinical trials are an important part of medical research, but do you know what a clinical trial is and who's involved? Clinical trials are research studies aimed at evaluating a medical, surgical, or behavioral intervention. They are the primary way that researchers find out if a new treatment, like a new drug or medical device, like a pacemaker, is safe and effective in people. New drug approval is based on successful trials into the safety and efficacy of new treatments. There's a huge team of people who help to ensure that clinical trials run smoothly. This includes doctors, carers, nurses, postgraduate students, and research scientists. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused huge disruption to clinical trials across the world and impacted the ability to conduct these trials safely. Michael Lauer, Deputy Director for Research at the U.S. National Institute of Health, stated that the effect of COVID-19 has been enormous, with thousands of trials, around 80% of non-COVID-19 trials, being stopped or interrupted. Can you think of reasons why clinical trials have been so severely affected due to the COVID-19 pandemic? Take a moment to pause the video and jot down some ideas. The physical distancing requirements to protect patients and researchers has caused major disruptions to clinical trials. Trials often involve patients from vulnerable populations, and these individuals are often most at risk from exposure to COVID-19, which means that it would not be safe to ask them to travel into medical research centers. The first priority of clinical trials must be the safety of the trial participants. Another reason why many clinical trials have been stopped is due to the focus on COVID-19 treatment and research. Many doctors involved in research have been called to the front line to help treat patients, and many researchers and research institutions that were working on other research topics have switched their focus to COVID-19 research. Although there have been some significant negative impacts from the COVID-19 pandemic, there have also been some amazing scientific and medical achievements and a huge emphasis on COVID-19 research. Let's first focus on COVID-19 research in the UK. The UK government made COVID-19 research a top priority, and as a result, have prioritized all clinical trials involving COVID-19 and enabled them to access fast-track approval. A good example of this is the recovery trial. The UK has been at the forefront of research into treatment for COVID-19 and has been conducting a national clinical trial on a huge scale called the Randomized Evaluation of COVID-19 Therapy Trial, or Recovery Trial. This is a national clinical trial conducted by researchers at Oxford University and involves all major hospitals in the UK and around 3,500 doctors, nurses, and research staff. It also involves over 35,000 participants and 178 active research sites. The trial is hoping to identify treatments that may be beneficial for people with COVID-19. As of February 2021, the recovery trial has tested 10 interventions on adults. The trial has already had a significant impact on the treatment of COVID-19 around the world. On the 5th of June 2020, the trial found that there was no clinical benefit in the use of hydroxychloroquine in hospitalized patients with COVID-19. On the 22nd of June 2020, preliminary results showed that low-dose dexamethasone treatment reduced the death rate by one-third in hospitalized patients needing ventilators due to COVID-19. This was a massive achievement, as the recovery trial had found evidence for the first effective treatment for COVID-19. Dexamethasone was not only found to be effective, but also cheap and widely available around the world. A study by Health Data Research UK estimates that this discovery would save approximately 650,000 lives globally in the following six months. There was more good news from this study on the 11th of February 2021. The recovery trial found that an arthritis drug called tocilizumab significantly reduces the risk of death from COVID-19 when given to hospitalized patients with severe symptoms. This gives doctors around the world another tool to help treat patients with COVID-19. As of February 2021, the recovery trial is still ongoing. UK medical research has also made a significant contribution to the development of a vaccine for COVID-19. The UK formed a COVID-19 vaccine task force in April of 2020 to encourage the accelerated development of a vaccine through partnerships between industry, universities, and the government. 
In April 2020, the University of Oxford announced an agreement with the pharmaceutical company AstraZeneca to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. The UK government provided an initial £20 million for Oxford University's vaccine research. On the 8th of December 2020, the interim results of the Phase 3 trials reported that the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has an acceptable safety profile and has been found to be efficacious against symptomatic COVID-19 in this interim analysis of ongoing clinical trials. A later analysis showed the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine to have an efficacy of 76% 22 days after the first dose and an 82% efficacy when the second dose is given 12 weeks or more after the first. A benefit of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is that it can be stored in a normal domestic refrigerator and it can be stored for up to six months, which makes it easier to roll out in a national vaccine program. On the 30th of December, 2020, the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine was authorized by the UK medicine regulator and became the second vaccine to enter the UK national COVID-19 vaccination program. As of February 2021, this vaccine has been approved by the European Medicine Agency and by several countries around the world. As well as research in the UK, there has been significant global research into COVID-19 and international collaboration. The World Health Organization organized a multinational clinical trial called the Solidarity Trial, which aims to find treatments for COVID-19. It's one of the largest international trials for COVID-19 treatments, involving around 12,000 patients in 500 hospital sites in over 30 countries. The Solidarity Trial published interim results on the 15th of October 2020. It found that all four treatments evaluated, remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, ritonavir, and interferon, had little or no effect on overall mortality, initiation of ventilation, and duration of hospital stay in hospitalized patients. This may not seem like a successful result, However, it can be very useful to know which drugs aren't effective, so that we aren't treating patients with non-effective drugs. Another area of medical research which has been truly international has been vaccine development. Prior to COVID-19, a vaccine had never been produced in less than several years. Now there are several approved vaccines for COVID-19, and this has been due to a huge international effort. As of February 2021, 66 vaccine candidates were in clinical research. 20 of which were in Phase 3 trials. As of February 2021, 10 vaccines have been authorized by at least one national regulatory authority for public use, 2 RNA vaccines, 4 conventional inactivated vaccines, 3 viral vector vaccines, and 1 peptide vaccine. In summary, we've discussed the impact of COVID-19 on medical research both in the UK and internationally. In your interview, you should always try to link your answers back to medicine. If you're asked about the impact of COVID-19, then adding the impact on medical research to your answer would dramatically increase the strength of your answer, as research is a vital part of medicine and continued improvement. In our next lesson, we'll consider the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic has had on children and education in general. Best of luck on your interviews, and we'll see you in the next video.